Hello and good Wednesday to everybody. I'm Will Schick, Head of Product Development at Atomic Mass Games. And today I'm here to paint some X-Wing. That's right. I'm going to be taking the V-19s and then next week I will be following up with uh, ETA-2 uh, Jedi Starfighter. I'm going to be painting these specifically as an Aayla Secura Squadron. So my goal today is kind of to knock out some cool Aayla Secura feeling colors on these V-19s. And then next week I'm going to take the ETA-2 and I'm going to shift that over from the normal colors to an Aayla Secura color uh, so that everything will match up really nice. We'll have this really unified squadron and then I can fly my ships around and make pew pew noises as my poor clones probably die for emotional impact in my X-Wing games. It's unfortunate, but that is, that is the life of the clone when they're flying the V-19. On that somber note, let's shift over the camera and get cracking. Um, so you're gonna see, just to start, uh, I did the uh, gray white base coat using the airbrush, so I've completely covered up uh, the original paint job that was on this V19. Um, in order to do that, I didn't do anything to the paint underneath. So using an airbrush, I was able to keep all of the color uh, application really thin. Of course, these have really great deep details, so it's hard to lose anything anyway. You can do the same thing with a rattle can. You just want to make sure that you're really careful with the applications as you go over it. Uh, like John showed uh, several streams back when he did some repaints on some A-wings, uh, you don't have to do a primer layer at all. You can also simply use a clear coat layer, uh, like a dull coat or a matte varnish. You can spray that over the top and you can simply paint over what's already there. So. Um, that is effectively how we got started. I have my two little ships here. I have one mounted on a peg. I did a brass rod on the other one. Um, this one suffered a little battle damage over the time, so I'm going to have to fix him later. But we're ready to go. And we're just going to start blocking out colors. So the first thing that I want to start with is I'm going to start by doing uh, the overall white gray. And to do that, I'm going to be using rainy gray from scale. And I'm going to mix that in with a bit of Nakar to make a nice little off-white color. Uh, this will give me a nice foundation. It'll be kind of a mid-tone. And it'll be a good way to get the foundations done for everything. So this is gonna be an overall base coat. I'm not gonna really worry about specking anything out or maintaining that lighter base coat from the brush. Now, I could have skipped this step probably by using the airbrush um, and dunning a base spray that was the base white that I wanted to go with. Um, but we didn't do that, we're just going to do some quick brush work here, and this won't take very long at all. Thinning out the paint just a little bit to get things going. Doo -doo -doo. I hope everyone who's joining us for the first time had a wonderful weekend. I was looking forward to some more awesome Star Wars content this week in terms of the streams. We have a live game, our first of what will hopefully be the return of many tomorrow for Thursday's live stream. And I'm looking forward to expanding all of that stuff out as we continue to have vaccines open up and kind of move forward in our phases here in Washington. I know a lot of other places have been cruising right along as well. Our goal is to continue to remain as safe as possible. We want to make sure that when we go back to the game store, we get to stay at the game store. Uh, so we're taking every effort to make sure that's the case. But it is uh, particularly exciting to finally, finally be back to a position where we might actually be able to sit across the table from each other and put to good use all of these sweet hobby miniatures that we've been working on over time. So whether that's our X-Wing ships that we're gonna be painting this week, uh, which we will hopefully get to put on the table at some point. I'll be honest, I've never played Galactic Republic. I was really, really big into X-Wing during the 1.0 days and then only got to play a little bit due to time constraints in the 2.0 days. Still really enjoyed the game there. Um, but I am fully on the Rebellion and Empire side, where I have just about everything there. I've got a decent amount of scum and villainy ships as well. Uh, if it was in 1.0, you can almost be guaranteed I have at least some of it, if not multiples of it. But with the Clone War stuff coming out after, I just never found myself with an opportunity to do as much playing with it as I wanted to, and even though it's probably my favorite of the Star Wars eras, I hadn't really moved into it. So this is pretty exciting for me, um, not only to be jumping in to the Clone Wars era stuff on X-Wing and learn some new 
faction play, but also to be doing so in a way that says that I get to create my own squadron. And I'm probably not alone in saying that Ayla is certainly one of my top Jedi picks when it comes to cool Jedis. So it is pretty cool. I have no doubt that after this I will probably be doing something Plo Koon related because he is my absolute fave. Uh, and I think this will prove to be a nice little testing ground for how to do a wolf pack style squadron. Get Plo and his Delta 7. It's a little Aether Sprite. So, that'll be pretty cool. My favorite ship in the game, while well, they're asking John that, I would have to say that I think my favorite ship goes back to my. So, Rebel side, uh, I'm a huge. I'm a huge A Wing fan. And I think that they are uh, one of the trickier ships definitely to fly, at least from my experiences in 1.0 for sure, and a little bit from my experiences in 2.0. you got to be able to manage the fast but nimble kind of softer targets. Uh, and then when it comes to the Empire, I kind of flip-flop and I go, to, I go to the Defender. So I think I have it mixed up probably. Crossing faction days, but see, I, I remember the Defender from the good old like PC con PC days of Tie Fighter, and like once you got in that Defender, there was no going back. The Interceptor was cool. That's probably my second favorite Imperial ship. And usually, if I'm building a squadron just for funsies, it's going to have Interceptors, and it's probably going to have a Defender in it, which makes the latest X-Wing squadron pack kind of perfect for me. It has everything I love, including a Darth Vader and a TIE Defender. How could you say no to that? All right, I think this is good. So I'll hit these guns too. I don't actually know what I'm going to do with the guns yet, but we might as well get the base coats over them just to make sure that's going. And then we'll do it on ship number two while ship number one dries. Super exciting stuff. Here we go. Oh no, it's all right. John's here. I know John's in the chat, so he'll probably answer at some point. Plus, John and I flip flopped last week, so I can understand if everything's like cattywampus and confused. And I believe we'll be flip flopping next week because exciting, exciting. Uh, Simone Elliott, our glorious leader, our head of studio, is going to be coming out as part of her migration out to the Everett Seattle area so she's gonna be joining us in the office uh, at the start of like May I think which is right around the corner which is crazy so we'll be flip-flopping our stream times uh, as I will be spending a lot of time in office with one Simone Elliott as we get things figured out and carve out our new space and all, all the good stuff we got so many plans so many plans, I tells you. We've been hard at work talking about future organized play, experience kits for X-Wing in the development side, and that's been really exciting and fun. We have some cool ideas that we're hoping to put into practice in the next over the course of the next year. Um, so that's really cool. We're looking at all the neat things that are going to be releasing in the coming year. Of course, we have a few things left for this year, specifically the Trident. I think I definitely have to paint me a giant mechanical squid ship uh, in some kind of specific color, so let's start thinking about that now. What are we going to do there? The primary color schemes are pretty cool, so sometimes it's... Sometimes I always found, like, with the X-Wing ships, I never really knew what how to paint them any better. I was like, well... It's pretty good looking, like, it's exactly what I would want to do. Um, and that's when I think, you know, it's always fun to to build in campaign ideas or once we get back to generalized play, creating your own custom squadrons, giving them that backstory, all that classic hobbyist stuff. And then you can start doing your own markings, your own pilots. And 
Nothing says that your oddball can't be some other pilot card or something just to show you know, that that's what it works when you're playing those narrative kind of style games in your head or with other players. There's a lot of customization and flexibility. Let's get rid of that little whatever that was. I don't know. A piece of smoots. All right, great. I mean, you can always paint your own X-Wings for those in the chat who are excited about this possibility. You've always got that option. Okay, so we have a nice base color down. It's pretty cream. We're going to turn this into more of a white. So I'm going to take more Nakar, basically, and I'm going to add that into my mix. And then I'll probably follow it up with a little bit of titanium white as well. And the goal here, again, is to just start making that base color um, really nice. Actually, going to just pull a bit out of my well. Just going to try and show you what I'm doing here. If you're curious to see it, look at my dirty, dirty palette. It's the worst. So we're just working right here. So here's the Nakar. Um, here's my white. So I'm just kind of like mixing that in, and I think that's pretty good. So we're going to use this. This was our base. This is now our highlight. And we're going to start working this over the entire course of the miniature. And again, I'm kind of approaching it this way because I'm still not really entirely sure which colors I want to be blue. Uh, this isn't blank, so these V19s came straight out of the... Um, Galactic Republic, what's the name of the box? It's the one with the V19s and the Aether Sprite. Um, they came right out of it. I simply just used my airbrush to spray a very quick and easy uh, primer layer over top. And like we were talking about earlier, if you missed it, <coughs> John did some A-wing repaints where he didn't even spray a primer layer over the top. He just simply used a matte varnish um, as the primer layer, so he painted right over the pre-paint of the A-wings themselves. So there's a lot of ways to approach this. Um, you absolutely do not need to take the paint off in any way because we're keeping our paint layers nice and thin, uh, like you should anyway. So the details on these ships are nice and deep and definitely will stand up to extra thin layers of paint. So there's no reason to like worry about getting a blank ship or erasing any of the colors or anything like that. Like completely unnecessary. So I think what we're going to do is because we're going to play with some number one, we're never really going to look at the bottom of the ship uh, in play. We're only going to see it from the top. Number two, we can kind of assume that we're using our classic zenith highlighting rules, uh, which means that the light source would be coming from the top. So this would be where the light is, the dark, you know, you get all the shadows down here. So we're going to leave that basically like it is and we're just going to let that be in shadow and this will help speed up our process a little bit as well. I need to thin out my paints just a little bit. You can tell it's not winter anymore. My paints are drying out quicker than they used to. Here in Seattle it's still pretty wet but that wet palette might be an okay thing at this point. And there's definitely a lot of different ways you can do this. I'm doing like just a straight base coat. If you wanted to, you could absolutely go with like a stippling or a dry brushing technique, especially on these nice, highly detailed panel areas and stuff. Um, but because I want kind of an even layer as I start laying down the blues and everything, I'm not gonna worry too much about that kind of approach. We're just gonna do really even straight base coats. It probably will, and that's okay. I mean, you know, it's a valid question. Some folks, I think, are excited by the prospect of being able to paint their own squadrons. I certainly am. Uh, the good news is, you know, the ships already allow for that, and that's kind of what we're showing on the streams. Uh, when we do this stuff, we're just giving you ideas on how to approach painting, repainting the ships for the folks who love the fact that they come out looking super awesome and, and classic. Well. You know, you don't you don't have to watch or you can watch and just hang out with us because, you know, it's fun. It's fun to hang out. Part of the 
whole reason we do these streams is that it just gives us an opportunity to kind of chill and chat, answer questions. Obviously, we love to do what we can to help people on their hobby journeys, if that's a thing that they're doing uh, and looking to improve upon or interested in like trying out. Maybe you've never painted a ship before. Maybe you've never painted anything before. Uh, but you're curious about it, hopefully this kind of inspires you to take the plunge and give it a shot on one of your ships. Even if it's as simple as changing the squad markings from red to blue. Maybe you play a bunch of blue squadron pilots and you're always like, I don't like the fact that we keep putting down uh, we keep putting down red, red squadron marking ships. Okay, well, just take your blue, go through and repaint over those red squadron markings. Super easy. And you're ready to go. Uh, Alright, so... That is that. I think I want to go one layer lighter, so I'm just going to grab pretty much pure Nakar at this point. I want a little bit of that previous color just to tie everything together. I do want this to be pretty white. Pretty light. And on this one, I'm just kind of going to go through, and instead of doing an overall full base coat, I kind of want to just edge this stuff out. So. I'm going to pull it across the edge of the ship. And this is where it's kind of neat, too, because these starships are always a little roughed up. They're never quite perfectly uh, perfectly factory fresh. I certainly don't want my ships to be factory fresh. Um, you can allow that texture from kind of this glazing process here where we're doing highlights with thinner paints to work to your advantage because it makes the blending process way easier. You don't have to worry so much about uh, teasing anything out. If I wanted to, I could grab my secondary brush and do some blending. Like for instance, maybe I decide that I wanna smooth out these panels a little bit. I can come in and use my blending brush to tease those colors out, just like I would on any other miniature. And this will allow those transitions to look really smooth really quickly. You just got to make sure that that brush stays nice and wet. And that your paint is nice and smooth. And you can certainly go through and two brush blend like you would on anything else. So again, like I can just come in, take that second brush, blend out my colors, and I could get really, really specific with the blending, uh, but because there's definitely a possibility that we might cover up some of this stuff with the blues, I'm not going to worry as much about that. I'm going a little more white than the classic like Republic white because looking at the reference that I have of Ayla's uh, ship, her I say ETA, I know that there's a lot of differences in opinion on how it's said. I'm probably wrong, I'll be honest. Um, but I find ETA also to be funny. Uh, her Starfighter, she has a lot more of like a true white going on. So I'm looking for colors to split a little bit of that difference here. And to make something that feels a bit brighter but still harkens back to that cream off-white color of the General Republic Starfighters. Um, so if I was going to paint something more in a classic V19 color that I didn't have, uh, I would start basically the same way. I had to use a little bit more yellows in terms of my whites because I think the Republic colors are a little more yellowy. They're a little more eggshell. Whereas the colors that I'm using here are cooler, they're not as warm. But overall, I think that in kind of our final look at this, it's going to look pretty close to everything. Okay, I want to be a little mindful of time because we do want to get through everything. But this is going to be the longest part of our journey. And getting the starfighters painted, so yeah, and exactly like 
first time caller saying in the chat, if you're timid about this or you're a little worried that you're gonna mess something up, the best place to start is to just go, okay, I wanna make this red squadron ship a blue squadron ship or a green squadron ship. Go in, find exactly where those squadron markings are on the ship and then just basically trace them out uh, using the brush. And just take your time, keep your paints nice and thin. And if you make a mistake, which is possible, as you're, especially if you're learning brush control, uh, the best part about it is you can just grab your second brush, always have a blending brush, and you can go back in and you can pretty much erase anything that you want just by having that wet brush and blending it all out. Um, it's not just a tool for making your color blends a little smoother. It also works really great for correcting your mistakes. And I use it more often if you watch any of the streams, X-Wing or not, I use that brush a ton for solving my mistakes. And I talk funny because I keep it in my mouth so it's always accessible to me really quick. Um, so I always have it in my teeth and then I can just quickly, you know, over time I've learned how to switch in and out of those brushes really fast. Okay, so more of that paint that's a little too loose, a little too watered down, so I'm just going to add a little more paint to it. Go back to my brush. Keep going. I made the cardinal sin. I didn't put enough paint on my palette, so now I'm having to remix paint in the middle of my process, which puts me down on the back foot a little bit because I have to play with it to make sure that I'm getting the consistencies to where I liked them. All right. Oh, Simone in? V19 only expansion. I mean, you never know. Knowing that folks out there are interested in more V19 goodness, people take note for sure. All right. I'm just going to continue to work this color down. This one might not be quite as pretty, but that's okay. Because, I'll grab that blending brush really quick. I'm just gonna go in, smooth out this patchiness. So you can see here how, by using that brush, I can also clean up my patchiness. Because maybe I didn't apply the paint quite as nice as I wanted to. So I just come in with that wet brush, get those colors out. One of the things that I'm going to have to consider, which probably won't happen until next week's stream, uh, so I have some time to think about it, is if I want to go through and do a wash of any type over this, like if I want to do a whole wash. Uh, if you watched John's A-Wing stream a while ago, he used an oil wash at the end to kind of tie everything together, bring back all of the details and the cracks. That is absolutely an option you can do. You can do an overall like wash to shade everything down. If you do that, then you want to make sure that you plan ahead for the fact that your colors are going to get duller. They're going to get darker. So if you want something really bright and contrasty, you just have to go that extra step. You really have to blow out the colors and the highlights because it's going to get dingy. It looks really, really nice on Things like X-Wing though, so uh, these ships love being grungy. Star Wars in general really loves being grungy. There aren't a ton of things outside of like Naboo starships that are super, super clean. Most of the time there's a lot of carbon scoring and grit and grime. It's very lived in. I think that was probably part of what they were going for with Naboo is it's so idealistic and untouched by reality. Very shimmery and shiny. It's just not how, not how the world works overall for the most part. But oh, any kind of overall wash or glaze can do a whole lot as well. And it also is one of those things that makes painting X-wing ships really easy and approachable. I think because if you just lay down base colors. 
Um, you don't even have to do the process that I'm doing. You could just lay down like your solid base color, get all of your squad markings in there, and then at the end, you can go ahead and come back and do that one wash, that one glaze to tie everything together. Uh, and all of a sudden, your colors get nice and naturally shaded. You get some good shadows, you get some good grit and grime. Everything kind of pulls together in a really nice way. So, I think overall from my first time painter perspective, there's a lot of really awesome bonuses to doing X-Wing ship repaints in general. Because A, you have the ship already done, so you can just practice on doing areas that are already knocked out and work on your brush control that way, which is great because brush control is such an important part of improving at the hobby and like a hobbyist's journey. You can, of course, uh, just start utilizing washing to get really great results really fast. The separatist droids are really shiny because they don't last very long. I've seen some pretty dirty separatist droids though, but all right, so I think we're done here. We've kind of gotten up to our white that we want. Um, we might push this even a little further as we move forward, but we'll do that with some edge highlighting if we decide we want to do it. So I'm going to move on to my blues now. And looking at the kind of the Ala colors, there's a really dark blue, and then there's kind of more of a teal, like uh, aqua blue. So I'm going to use Holder Blue for my dark blue. And I'm going to use uh, this turquoise from Scale as kind of my aqua lighter blue. And then I'm simply going to mix in some blacks and some whites and stuff to play with those colors. Um, so we'll start with the darker blue first, which is going to be our Holdra. So I'll put some of this on the palette. And this is where we get to be creative because there's no. Holdra Blue makes it sway into everything. Like it's, it is the unifying force. It is truly the force. It surrounds us and binds us. Um, all right, so we got to figure it out. So I think we're going to start. There's not as much dark blue on the ship, so I think we're going to start here. We're just going to kind of like knock in this little triangle. This is going to take a couple of coats because the Holder Blue is awesome. One of the things that makes it awesome is that it has this really powerful pigment that stretches really nice. So it's really good for washes and stuff. But we kind of want more of a solid looking color. So we did that one. We'll flip over here. We'll do this one. And we'll consider our next move. So we'll come in and knock out this panel blue as well. And we're going to take a pretty geometric approach to this, I think. Now, if we wanted to get really crazy, we could pull out our really soft artist pencil and we could draw on like tentacle designs or something. Really wild. We could do all kinds of different things. Okay, so we have the dark blues there. I think we're going to make this little part here, which is green on the original V19, I think. I think this is the green part. We'll do this in the dark blue as well. So I'm going to knock that out in the Holdra. Um, oh, I'm going to make. So those might be worthwhile to be in gray. So I think we're just going to stick with. We'll make. Uh, yeah, we'll do this. We'll do these little guys right here in the Holdra. I think I'm just going to use all the little spot, kind of the smaller things. And then we'll stop. We'll start doing our more teal blues. And we'll see how that feels. We'll just kind of use this guy as our, as our guidepost, I think. So I made a mistake right there, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my other brush. This is a little more tricky because it's on white, but it'll still work. 
I'm just going to blend that little mistake away using my second brush and now we have a nice tight line again um, is there anything else that we want to do we got some stuff down here let's let's think about this so we'll come in and hit this little triangle which means this little triangle is that this one I'm getting really quiet because now I'm like focusing in and thinking. I'm having to think really hard. Alright. It is a wild paint, I know. Uh, okay. So, is that going to be it for our Holder Blue? I feel like I want more Holder Blue, but I'm I'm hesitant to like go too whole hog because we have a whole nother blue to do. And again. So I'm just going to build this back up to be nice and dark. Again, while I love how Holder Blue stretches over colors, we picked it because it has a really rich, rich blue shade to it. And we'll go back and add a little bit of edge highlighting to these spots to bring them back out. There we go. Yeah, I'm I'm happy with this. I think we're good. Okay. So I'm going to stop with the Holder Blue for the moment. We're going to move over to our next color, which I might mix a little Holder Blue with. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. There we go. Okay, so we move on to this turquoise. I'm going to mix it with a little bit of Holder Blue, just to kind of get a darker base down. And then we're going to see where this takes us. And so I think we're definitely going to do this wing tip here. This is going to be so stark compared to that holder, but that's okay because we're going to shade it back down with a blue wash. So we'll come in and we'll do this little wing flap. I'm going to leave that other wing flap white, or at least our off white color. Hit that again, so we'll do this wing flap over here. Yes. Build this up. One of the things i got to figure out is which pilots I'm going to take with Ayla. I haven't really done my homework yet on any of it. I was just excited to get to paint some clone ships and start building out the, the Clone Wars section of my X-Wing stuff. I didn't ask too many questions. I was just like, yes, these. Seems great. I'm sure I'll learn over the course of a few games and probably a few losses what works best with what we got. All right, so I'm going to do, let's do this like this. Ooh, do we get really like, how fancy do we get? Maybe we do that whole thing like that. This little one like this. And come in and we'll do this one like that. See if we can't maintain those little white ridges. A bit. And then shift it back over to that holder blue. Like this. Just have to clean those up here in a second. Decide if you like that. It's kind of neat. I think I'm on board with this. Make sure it's nice and clean like that. I'll switch back to our other color. Come in. Clean up those squares a little bit. I might have to switch back to our white and reclaim those little edges, but that's okay. We can 100% do that. Down here, get over here. Get right here. There we go. Up that 
little mistake. Came over a little too far. That's okay. That cleaned up. So, I do really enjoy painting blues, so I agree. Blue's pretty fun. Purple's my favorite, though. Like, I think out of all the colors to paint, purple is probably the one that I enjoy painting the most. Okay, where else do we want to go? I think we want to have you know, that. Okay, we're going to do this panel here, which surrounds this darker triangle one that kind of mimics how the darker blues on Ayla's Starfighter are surrounded or mash into lighter blues. So we'll get this down. Switch over here. Just making sure that I always do the other side at the same time so I don't forget anything. Just gonna knock that in really quick. Some of these edges and stuff we miss them. I do my second coat because this is now dry and I want some really nice solid flat colors so we can build up on them. There. Get the edge of the wing tip too. There we go. Like that. Come back through over here. Make sure we have nice even colors. Cool, cool. Okay. As Marco would say, doing my Marco impression now. Cool, cool. Okay. What else do we want to have in blue here? Um, let's look at our reference photo really quick. I think maybe we do. Maybe we do. What do we want to do? What do we want to do? I feel like there's not enough blue yet. So let's do, what if we did these engines? Would that look weird? Let's find out together, shall we? And I do want to put in a little bit of gray cockpit and stuff because I think that will also tie it into Halo's Starfighter look. So maybe we'll call this good for their blue. And there we go. Alright, I'm liking this. I think this is this is looking pretty good. Of course he says that he's the one painting it. Well, there's a good lesson for you. You are the one painting it and it's yours, so if you like it doesn't matter what other people think. The only time what other people think matters is if you're going to go into a painting competition. If you're going to challenge yourself to a competition painting level, then it 100% matters what other people think, not what you think. Otherwise, I don't like this anymore. We're going to do this. Oop. We're just going to make this one solid color. I think we're too distracting. we got too much going on. So, if we don't like it, we paint over it. But I do think that probably means that we need a little more Holdra. I'm going to... You know what? I think we're going to do... Holder over the gun. Sorry, the blaster cannons. The laser cannons. Do blue here. They're 100% not guns. That is not what they are. They're blasters. Okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. Cover those in. That makes me pretty happy. Brush doing that does not make me very happy. We'll fix that. So if your brush ever starts to split, that usually means that your paint is drying out. So just give it a quick rinse. Put it back in the paint. Make sure that the paint is nice and loose. 
um, but the drying of the paint will usually pull the bristles apart so you just want to be careful about that if that does start to happen it can be an indicator that you just need to rinse out your brush if it continues to happen sometimes it can be an indicator that something worse happened to your poor brush but 90s disposable cut I mean a little bit okay so I'm pretty happy with that I think we've got probably enough blue probably maybe a little bit more could be good but I want to hold off on that for a second I'm going to take this Moonstone Alchemy. Uh, I saw some really cool reference of V19s that had kind of this gold, this gold canopy. Um, this like, so I think that we can replicate that look pretty well with this color. And if we give it a little wash at the end, it'll look pretty good. Let's kind of give it that cool old sheen that they have tinted windows you know there plus it plays really that yellow plays really nice with the blue so that works well let's go to our grays um, so I'm going to use just straight rainy gray here and I'm going to build out uh, a little bit of gray for the cockpit. So looking at Ayla's Starfighter, um, she definitely has kind of a more gray the cockpit around the ship, kind of where the wings are built out is very gray. So I think we're just going to come in. I'm going to go back through, do something like this. Tie everything together. And then when we shade this down with a nice black, it'll be really noticeable. So I'm just going to get under the wing, little wings on top. I'm deciding in my head right now. Ooh. It's a good lesson not to put your paint in other paint. Uh, I'm just trying to decide right now if I want the these little like ailerons or whatever they are right here to be gray. I think maybe I do because the rest of the grays aren't really showing up too much. So I'll come back through and we're gonna do these gray as well. It's kind of mimic the Ala like encapsulated cockpit thing with the grays. And then we can And then we can come back through with a nice little black wash and darken those up. That'll be pretty cool. I'm going to switch over and just grab some flat black. And we're going to do the engines really quick. Oh, oh, got to reach. Got to reach. There we go. Okay. Let's go ahead and I'm just going to thin this down into kind of a wash. We're going to do this over the blaster cannons and the engines. Keep those kind of dark. I don't know if necessarily that's the reference that I have for Alice doesn't really have doesn't really have engines as it were. Looks like the blaster cannons are maybe silver in the art that I'm seeing. But if we start with black and we don't like it, it's really easy to fix later. And of course, due to time, I'm not really doing the underside of this ship. I honestly think you could just leave it <laughs> and not worry about it. Because again, no one's really going to be looking at the underside of the ship. Uh, if you plan on doing some super sick photography or something, and you would see the underside of the ship, obviously, I would strongly recommend uh, spend some time painting it. But... If this is the way that everyone's going to see the ship, this is the way that you want to be mostly concerned with showing and what you paint and stuff like that. So come in, do that. So angry. Okay. Pull that out really 
real quick. So that cannon done. Things beautiful, lovely. Looking really good. So, we have really great foundation for what we're doing here. With everything, I'm going to grab a little bit of blue cyan ink. And we're just going to make up a quick wash. And we're going to do this over all of our blues. So just really quick, come in. I'm use this to shade stuff down. Give a little bit more dimensionality to these flat panels. I'm going to try to keep it pretty light though, because I don't want to. I don't want to mess with the colors too much. So I'm going to use a pretty controlled hand with it. I definitely want to push. Ideally, I want to push the wash to the edges. So you can kind of see how I'm forcing the wash to go closer to the inside of the wing and then letting the wash not be pulling as much uh, on the outside of the wing. And that'll give us a nice highlight, a little pseudo highlight feel to everything. Right here, we can hit all of the halter blue, which will just deepen it immensely. And the halter blue, we're definitely going to want to go back through and do a little edge highlighting on before we go anywhere else. Here again, I'm kind of just thinking about where I want to push that wash so that it gives me the highlights or the shades where I want them and the highlights where I kind of feel like they should be. Here again, I'm just going to kind of we're going to let those things let the wash pull around those little raised areas and let it run into the panel lines and stuff. Give us that extra little bit of separation before we go in with our black wash. Start dark lining everything. Again, these halter blue sections we just really want to deepen up. Really, really dark. This engine glow part. This engine paneling. I'm just kind of thinking about getting the shade across the where the panel meets the other sections of the wing. So you have some nice differentiation there and some shading. I'm coming back over here. Same thing. I'm just going to put down the wash. On the Holder Blue, we're not really worried about moving it around or where it goes, but on this panel, we definitely want to make sure that we're pushing it towards where we want the dark to be. And typically, that dark should be towards the interior of the panel, or towards the exterior of the panel, excuse me. So I'm pushing it down in this corner here, leaving this section right here a little lighter. It's going to give us that nice feel of highlight. And then same thing here, pushing the wash more towards the interior of the ring, the wing, the ring. So that gives a little bit of extra shading, a little bit of extra highlighting, just based on where we're pushing that wash and making it flow. But we're not done. We got some places to go in the 11 minutes we have left. One of the biggest things that's going to take this from a really uh, nice looking paint scheme to a really sharp looking paint scheme. It can be the edge highlights. They're obviously important. Um, however, something that's even more important than that is going to be doing the black lining. So again, you can 100% do this step with just doing an all over wash. But you have to remember it's going to tint everything down. If we want to keep these nice colors vibrant and looking really sharp and poppy, an overall an all over wash is not going to be our huckleberry. Instead, we want to create a really thinned out black. And then we're just going to go through and perform the very fun process of dark lining all these different panels. 
So the way to do this the easiest is to make sure that your paint really wants to flow. Um, so a lot of a lot of water or medium is your friend. You'll notice like all I have to do is touch where that panel line is, and the paint will naturally just want to flow into it um, because I've kept it nice and smooth and thin. So I'm just going to go through. And what I would do now is everywhere there's a panel line that I need to separate, I'm going to go in, like here's a great example where I can just touch along the canopy and it'll just flow right along where the canopy touches the hull because I have that paint nice and and smooth. So using the best way to make this I found is use uh, you can use a bottled premixed black wash of any type because it's already thinned down and it wants to flow. Mix it with a little bit of flat black of your choice uh, and then use an amount of water until the paint really just wants to run right off the brush. And the paint itself will do what you want it to do. You don't want, so see how it nicely filled in that area? I can do that again pretty cool. Um, this is one of the biggest joys for me in painting is when you do this because it feels effortless and yet at the same time kind of magical. Like normally a wash will stick to the top of the detail and it'll tint it but we've like washed it down enough that all it wants to do is run into those cracks and it's weak you know the pigments are separated enough so it's weak enough that it really won't tint the top of the surface because it's just not strong enough. It has to pool in order to really be successful. So this step can take a little while, you know, depending on the size and the number of panels and all that stuff. It's not really difficult though, because again, it's very easy to just touch the area with the brush and have that paint flow really nice and smooth into those sections magic and if you do get a little mistake you can really easily go in and clean it up with your other brush because the paint is so wet it absorbs right back into a dry brush super easy or even a slightly moist brush whatever you're working with so, and I'm kind of just touching this now everywhere I touch that paint just wants to run right in and you can do this with oil paints too if you're adventurous and have access to oil paints, want to work with oil paints, um, oil paints will flow really really nicely even better than acrylics will. Um, they have better adhesion as well when they do it but uh, you don't need oil paints. You can absolutely do this process with the acrylics. Again, if it wants to run on you into a place that you don't want it, it's super easy to just pull it right off. So we come around here, decide we want to like really accentuate this panel, just kind of touch around it and that paint will just flow right around those areas and all of this is really helping the eye define those shapes and separate them out which makes the, the overall paints look way more shaded highlighted than normal. So you don't even have to do any highlighting like when it comes down to great techniques especially on stuff like these starships or other things if you make really clean base coats and then you go through and you spend you know then the last part of your hobby time doing some really clean dark lining the results are going to be surprising in terms of just how transformative this process is to the final presentation because the eye loves it so much. I mean it's the same reason why you know comic books and animation have really strong dark lines to separate all the different colors. And you think about classic you know classic old school animation especially there wasn't a whole lot of differentiation like they're just flat colors so the real method to make those things feel separated 
and feel really defined was the dark line. It's those really strong black lines that separate everything out, separate the colors from each other. And that's exactly what we're doing here with this dark line. So it doesn't take much, especially the scale. Because there's only so much that I can see anyway. So, you know, you can go super wild and crazy and do a whole lot of really amazing blends and color mixes and stuff. But some of that's just going to be imperceptible to most viewers. So it also comes back to a question of spending your time wisely and doing things that has the maximum impact because well, I think we'd all love to be able to hobby non-stop we also all have other responsibilities and things that we have to get to heck we want to get to a game I love painting but I don't want to paint non-stop I do want to play the game with my awesomely painted miniatures and stuff as well so there we go so you can see how already just that simple step, and I immediately noticed right away, just looking at camera, that we missed a line here, so. Go through and add that, that line. How huge of a difference that single step will make to everything. So now we have the nice separations, everything looks really nice, everything looks really good and clean. Just wanna push these lines here a little bit more. This section really needs it. So that those will stand out since we didn't do them in a different color. There we go. So the last thing I want to do before we end is I just want to color that gray. So I'm going to go back to my black wash, which is hiding somewhere. Somewhere. I don't know where it went. There it is. Yeah. We're just going to use this Vallejo Premix black wash. We're gonna come in, and I'm just gonna do a really quick wash over those gray areas, and then maybe we'll do a little engine glow, and we'll call it call it a day. So this is just gonna be really quick, and you can see the difference. Oh, if I'm on camera, you can see the difference between what we did with that dark lining versus how this wash acts when it's on its own. So it's it's much thicker. Uh, it wants to pool, but it also significantly tints the surface of the mini, which is what we don't want when it comes to the dark line. We want that we want that wash to run directly into those little cracks and crevices without tinting the overall tone. Um, so there, like if we wanted to add some extra color to the engines to really deepen those up, we could use the wash on them as well. hit that a little extra. So with that going on, that's really cool. Use some engine glow. Uh, I thought of something else that I really wanted to do, but we're running out of time. Oh, I want to do a, just a couple of... I just want to do a couple of super stark highlights. So I'm going to take my Holder Blue. We're just going to do a really quick edge highlight on the Holder Blue sections. I would normally go through this on all of the... Uh, turquoise sections as well, but I don't think they need it as much as the Holder Blue does at this point. So I'm just going to take Holder Blue, I'm going to mix it with pure white because Holder Blue is a color that does not care um, about being mixed with pure white. It loses almost none of its none of its uh, saturation. It's an amazingly robust pigment. And I'm just going to grab a bit of it. And so for this, all I'm looking to do is I just want to hit the very edges of the panels. And then just to like help tease it out, I'm just going to go through and kind of wet blend out those little edges my other brush. Like for example, I want to hit this line right here. So just come through 
you can make this as stark as you want you can do it in several layers and that would be layer highlighting so for example say we just want to get like super crazy and we want it to be super punchy like a really extreme edge highlight you can come in Maybe not with this brush. This brush is the one we'll play today. Okay, there we go. And we can just come in, do something like really, really bright. Flip it over. Really, really bright. Grab that blend brush. Blend that part out. And again, just utilize that really bright. I like color to really define the edge of that panel and it's like the reverse of it's the reverse of what we did with the dark line it's the dark line we were pushing the panels apart by really accentuating the crevices with some edge highlighting process where further accentuating the panel differences in terms of elevation by giving the eye that thing that says oh this is like really raised so that just helps it pop right off you can come over here edge highlight on the gun if you wanted to give it that little sheen kind of like classic anime zing to it again it's a blaster I know I said gun what is that it doesn't exist you're right it doesn't exist it doesn't exist but the thinner you can keep this line and this is definitely one of those techniques where like you want your lines to be really thin because the thinner the line is the better the effect is going to be so if we can kind of see like how we just popped out that section of the gun mounting the casing gosh darn it the blaster casing i'm gonna have to start putting quarters into a jar it's just going to happen now all right, so again, we can do that. Well, let's say we want to get some really quick engine glow in because in three minutes it's over, but I don't care. I'm a rebel. Uh, I don't have any color out for this though, do I? We're just gonna grab, oh, this will work. We're gonna grab a little of this squid pink. Now I'm gonna mix it in with a little bit of murderous red, mayhem red, that's the color. Normally I would do a white uh, under this. So the idea being that you would take some pure white and just pop it in there. But for this, we're just gonna go straight in. Like so. Give ourselves a little magenta engine color to work with. And then grab a little bit of our titanium white. And we'll just wet blend little highlight stuff in there. There's that pink glow. Doo -doo. Doo -doo. There. Now we got a little pink engine glow. I mean technically I guess we'd have to add it down here but I'll deal with that later. So there we go. So there is our V19 Ela Secure Wingman. I will take this process transfer it to this one which we only got the base coats down on uh, and then maybe we'll do a little bit on the bottom sides of them i'll figure that out as i go join me next week uh which should be on friday i believe because john and i will be switching times so on friday i will complete up uh the rest of the squadron by going into the uh ala secura eta 2 so that'll be fun and then we'll have a full little Three fighter squadron ready to fight for the Clone Repu the Clone Wars and the Galactic Republic. I almost said the Clone Republic. It should be. Let's be honest. It should be. Uh, I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something. I hope you're inspired to give things a shot. Again, X-Wing is an amazing opportunity for you to go ahead and try out your hand at painting. Uh, whether you just kind of paint over certain sections that are already on the mini because they're all laid out for you. Or whether you want to do something completely brand new like I did here with uh, a whole fresh coat of paint so until next time be sure to stay safe stay happy play games as you can 
and join us tomorrow for a our first live stream game of quite some time. Uh, we will be with uh, Dallas Kemp and myself. Uh, it'll be the first of many, I hope. That'll be at 1 p.m. Pacific. And of course, on Friday, join John Schaefer as he paints more Star Wars stuff. Until next time, folks, stay safe, stay beautiful, and we will see you on the next one. Goodbye.